Chancellor, for the Swinburne community and our guests, I thank you for your remarks on this occasion. It is now my privilege to introduce Senator Kay Patterson, who represents Senator Amanda Vanston, the Federal Minister for Employment, Education, Training, and Youth Affairs. Senator Patterson has represented Victoria in the federal parliament since 1987. Prior to that, she had a distinguished career in academia, both here and in the United States. She is also, for several years, a member of the Council of Monash University. Senator Patterson. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my parliamentary colleagues, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here today. I'm not sure, uh, I think sometimes when a minister asks you to represent them, uh, you grab it with both hands when it's in a sitting week because it's the only reason you're allowed out of the house on the hill. So I feel like a little canary that's escaped from Canberra to have a day back in, uh, day back in Melbourne. When, so I feel a bit like a sort of student who's truanting, but I was delighted when I was given the opportunity and also delighted because of my interest and background in education. I do feel a little bit like an interloper being also a, a member of Monash Council, but I'm sure they don't mind lending me for the day as well. Um, it's, as I said, a delight to be here to participate in the opening of this first building of the Lilydale campus. I'm here on behalf, as, we, as you were told, of Amanda Vanstone, the Minister for Education, who was unable to be here because she's required in the chamber and she asked me to pass on her apologies and her congratulations to all who've been involved in the, in, this, in the development and opening of this impressive new regional campus. I have to say, as I was sitting there looking around at this superb building, that I'm a little bit green with envy, having spent most of my academic teaching life in the old Lincoln Mills in Swanson Street. And I wish Mr Merkett had had his hands on that before I had to spend 12 years of my life there and I realised just how fortunate the students are and this community in having such a, a beautiful um, facility here. Innovation and diversity are two very important hallmarks of the government's vision for higher education in Australia. This new campus is a fine example of a university looking to the future and taking advantage of what have been tremendous leap, leaps, a leap forward in technology in delivering education. Swinburne, since its inception as a technical college in 1908, has grown from being a local technical college into a multidisciplined, multi-campus provider of higher education of national and international significance. It has a strong reputation delivering career-oriented education, as well as being an institution with a strong commitment to research. And it's now making its mark in the new and exciting field of educational technology. And I've just been able to glimpse some of that uh, in, in campuses around Australia. And, and the fact that Swinburne's there at the cutting edge is, is very important. And I think well, Swinburne will have a major contribution to make. This innovative campus has been made possible through the collaboration between the Commonwealth, the state, and Swinburne. And the Commonwealth is very proud of the result of this collaboration. The building, as you've been told, was constructed with funds from the Commonwealth's Capital Development Pool. And uh, I got a nudge from, from uh, my colleague next to me who said the land cost almost as much as, the, as you put into the building. Um, a, a grant from the Commonwealth has also supported Swinburne's development of technologically advanced teaching methods. With, with, with such support and the state government's donation of land, Swinburne has developed a very impressive state-of-the-art campus. Indeed, such a development helps in putting Australia at the forefront of educational technology. Today's students, and very properly demand, very high standards. And progressive advances in technology, along with easier access to information via the internet, means much greater flexibility in sharing knowledge. There is now less need to congregate in lecture halls at rigidly set times. And again, as I've seen some of the innovations, I remember my first years at Sydney University when we were placed in lecture theatres with funny old black and white videos of someone sitting in front, a, he a talking head um, that was replayed to seven to ten other lecture theatres throughout, throughout the day. There have been some tremendous advances. Busy students find it uh, difficult to commit themselves to attending lectures and tutorials at set times and in set places and uh, through the use of video conferencing, computers, study guides and off-campus study centres at Lilydale, 
they will be able to organise their study time in a way that best suits their varying commitments. A Lilydale student will have as flexible and as varied a program as possible using up-to-date technology. Swinburne also is something of a pioneer in forging links with local industry. Generally, industry and higher education partnerships have been underutilised and subsequently business investment in higher education has been less than optimal. However, Swinburne and this campus in particular, located as it is in the rapidly expanding and economically strong outer eastern region, have led the way by forging strong links with local industry and business. As a pioneer of industry, um, as a pioneer of industry-based learning programs, Swinburne students benefit from being placed directly in industry for vocational employment as an integral part of course structure. One of the criticisms, I think, as you move around, as I have the opportunity of doing and moving and talking to people in industry, is that often our educational institutions don't prepare our students well enough for the day-to-day -day practicalities of working life. And I think the very important innovation here of this link between education and industry will be a vital example to other educational institutions of actually training students for the real world. In future, universities will need to manage their resources strategically and initiate change to keep pace with advances in technology. It is the government's aim to establish a more flexible policy environment to assist institutions in this process. Universities will need to be competitive in a constantly changing environment. Swinburne University is taking this lead and this new campus is a fine example of this forward thinking. As I said, I'm delighted to be here today. I congratulate Swinburne for having the courage and the foresight. And obviously it took a lot of effort and I know, a lot, I know personally a lot of the people who've been involved in uh, the vision that was taken now almost eight, nine years ago when it first was the seed of an idea. I congratulate all those who've been involved since the very beginning, those who've been involved in the vision, those who've been involved in the planning, and those who've been involved in getting to the point where today we can see uh, a great contribution to the lives of young people in this area and also to the lives of this community. I wish the Lilydale campus great success in all its endeavours and I feel sure that this campus will play a very large part and a strong part in this community and in the wider Australian community. Thank you.